We'll make sure that you get you one of those. Uh, uh, good news, uh, you know, I forgot to make this announcement. Uh, let me make this announcement right now while we're in here. And we let everybody else know. Uh, I talked to Brother Ferret from the Beams Bible Ministry. Uh, Brother Ferret is going to send us new pew Bibles uh, for the church. Uh, but we're going to do something for him. And what we need uh, Sunday... Uh, or before, uh, and we need 20 people to give $10. Uh, we need to send him $200, and, and, and it's not even nowhere near what the Bible. He sent me 48 of his Bibles, which is high dollar. And so uh, uh, Sunday, we'll just pick people out from the crowd, bring, you 10, bring $10 with you. We get 20 people to do that. That'll be a blessing. We're just going to send that money to them. We're going to support that ministry, uh, but I think it'd be a good thing to show him. He said, Bert, I'm going to give you the Bibles. You're not paying for them. I said, that's fine, Brother Fred. I appreciate that. But we do want to send him that money anyway, and I feel like $200 would be just a blessing uh, to the ministry. And uh, They're getting those Bibles all over the world. But the reason I'm getting their Bibles is because theirs don't fall apart. Uh, I just think, you know, the ones we've had, they just they, they come unbound. I don't like that. I don't want to pass anybody out anything half-beat in this place. I mean, I hate seeing people, visitors, holding Bibles where the Bible falls out on the ground, and I'm thinking, man, that's a terrible testimony. Uh, and I don't like it. And so, pray about that, please. Let's get everybody to do that. I know we got 20 in here with $10, uh, and that'll be a blessing. And that's a small price to pay to get some new Bibles in here. We're going to put them in our chairs, just a couple of here, each row, one in this one. Uh, and we'll be a short a little bit, but uh, uh, we know where people sit that need the Bible, so we'll place those. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even tell you where those people are? <laughs> Psalm 51, man, I just, I, I'm going to just don't understand it, man, I love my Bible, I love it, I wouldn't think about coming to church without one, and I just think, I got, it's like getting up eating breakfast, man, I got to take my Bible with me, uh, I got to take it with me to church, and I've shown up here a few times without one, but that's because uh, they were all up in my office or something, my wife, I got to set them in the window down, like, 13 up. She's like, are you going to take these to the church or what? They're, she hates them cluttering everywhere. <laughs> Can you imagine someone hates the Bible cluttering up the house? Wicked. Wicked. I mean, that Bible makes everything look better in the house. Matter of fact, when I get home, I'm going to, when she goes to bed, I'm going to put one everywhere. <laughs> you remember to do that. <laughs> Somebody shoot me a text right now or after we read the Bible. If we read the passage here, shoot me a text and put Bibles everywhere for Miss Kara. That'll be a blessing. She needs that. Amen. <laughs> And I'll make sure I erase it off my phone. <laughs> she reads all the text messages on my phone. I, she used to do that when we first got married, and I said, why do you keep doing that? And she said, do you get something to hide? Yeah. And I'm like, no. But, I mean, it's like Facebook for her to see who I text and what we say. It's like exciting to her. I'm like, you're, a, you're addicted to my text. And, and then she corrects me all the time because I, I, Miss Daisy, I cussed her out one time oh. uh, by accident. And I, I, I had Siri say something and I and, and they had cuss words in it. I'm like, oh, and she said, let me let me check your text to make sure they're all doing right. Like, there you go. Has anybody ever said a cuss word on Siri by accident? Okay, by accident. Uh, well, three of them raised their hand. I'm like, well, we know that you're. I did Did I do it on Tuesday? Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. One of the sisters. Amen. All right, let's read. Uh, Psalm 51, verse number 15. Uh, hopefully, I'll, I'll give us an introduction here in just a minute. O oh Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite and, uh, and a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of the righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Don't preach this message. If you're not broke, then God can't fix you. Wow, amen. If you're not broke, then God can't fix you. We're, we're, we're wanting 
I'm wanting revival for me, for my family, and you are my family. Our church, uh, of course, for Philadelphia, for America, the world, all that. And I realized that if we don't uh, get some things fixed, and, and, and you know, and I've prayed about what to preach, and there's many things I can say about prayer, and I could preach every Thursday night on prayer for, for, for years and just go different places in the Bible because they all pray. But I feel like the Lord's led us back to this passage again. And I think we just need to be honest with ourselves and understand that God knows what you are. God knows who you're lying to, what you're doing, and what's going on in your life. And if you're lying, or if you don't have your heart right with Him. And that's a scary thing to a God-fearing Christian. But it's an insignificant thing to the world. And I'm afraid that in our churches, in this room, quite possible, you have the exact same outlook as an unsaved person does about God knowing who you are and what's going on. And listen, guys, God can never send revival to us if we don't get broken so he can fix us and understand who we are and see ourselves for who we are. And honestly, I don't, I, I've maybe three times in, in seven years come to this pulpit to preach on stuff to help people in our church. I feel like that's what God would have us to say tonight. And so I'm not going to preach long, but I am going to break these verses down. And I just want to say, if, if you're not broke, then God can't fix you. And honestly, we're all broke somewhere or another. And tonight we need the Lord to reveal that to us so that maybe when we pray, some of us will be able to pray for longer than five minutes because the ones that are only praying five minutes need to have a broken time at the altar with the Lord and let God move into their life and see yourself for who you are. Because God can then do a work in your life if you'll let Him reveal to you and you'll accept that you do need help. And, and that's all of us. And David knew that he needed help. And so I'm going to go ahead and pray. Who's singing right now? Okay. I'm going to skip it. Uh, and but Paul doesn't care about that. I'm going to go ahead and pray. We're going to have church. We're going to get to it. Is that okay? All right. Uh, and, 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 and let's get into this. And, and I feel like the Lord can lead us on it. I've just written several things down. Uh, but I want the Lord to help us tonight. Well, guys, what we need is to meet with the Holy Spirit of God, for real. And really have God meet with us. And listen to me. There's a lot of churches that aren't having any contact with God. They're church by name. But they're not church as God's people where God can fix them and touch them and help them. And if we're not careful, when we get saved in the beginning, God is real to us. And then it gets a little bit dry, and it gets a little bit cold in our life, and we leave Him out, and we come to church, we don't get nothing from the preaching, we don't get nothing from the singing, and we just came because that's what we do. And, 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 I, and, I, and I'm thank, I thank the Lord for, uh, did you three graduate together here at the same time? Man, thank God they're, they're all here. But I, I will tell you this, moms and dads and teenagers, that's pretty unbelievable that they're all three here. Uh, and, 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 and we didn't get them all, but three out of four, whatever it was, is pretty good. Uh, but it's, the people that leave never got a relationship with the Lord and never were willing to admit they needed help and thought that the world's philosophy was better for them than it was for, for them, than God's philosophy was. Not sure they were ever saved. Some of the ones that have left the, the churches, not, not here, and they're talking about here. But if we're not careful, we'll think like they think, and God is not important to them out there. They do not care. But we're supposed to be different and want to really please Him. And verse 16 says, For thou desires not sacrifice. God doesn't desire that, man. He desires a broken and contrite spirit. And so let's pray right now we get into the message. Father, we love you. 
And Lord, I just want you to help us, Lord, Father, as we get ready to pray. Help our hearts to just get close to you, Lord. And Lord, I'm not saying that everybody in here is in trouble or anything like that, Lord. But if we're all honest, and as I'm talking, I need your help, Lord. I just, I want to be uh, broken before you, Lord. And I'd love to really touch the throne room of heaven tonight as I talk to you and not, not just beat the wind with words and, and not have anything ascend higher than this ceiling. I'd love for the heaven to, to hear from me and from our folks tonight, God. And Lord, if we're not broken, He can't fix us. And Lord, I pray that you would just help us to get something from the Word here in the next few minutes. Help us to assemble together as families, as individuals, as as friends, as as uh, people, and, and, and get a hold of God in our prayer time, Lord. God, I love you so much. I thank you for the passage of Scripture tonight. pray that you bless the preaching and teaching of your Word as short as it will be. But Lord, please bless the prayer time that we're going to have. And Lord, you said your house would be a house of prayer. And I thank God for that, Lord. May, may I have better leadership than to make it a house of prayer. May I lead the way, Lord, and get my heart right and stop falling to the same things every, every day, day in and day out, because I'm driven by flesh and not by the Spirit. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing so long. We understand that Psalm 51, maybe you're new, or most of you I'm looking around have been around long enough and, and understand that uh, Psalm 51 was written shortly after David uh, had cheated with Bathsheba, uh, King David, and he killed his her husband Uriah the Hittite and hid what had went on with him. And Brother Weedo talked about that and read that whole passage of Scripture here at our revival last week or whenever. And uh, I want you to understand that David was a broken man. And God had not spoken to David in about a year when he's writing this. He had not been with God. He had missed God. And David was a man of God at one time in his life and, and walked with God and played the harp for God and was a, a warrior for God and Amen. trusted in God and lived for God. And, and now David is broken because of his sin. And I, I, I'm scared tonight for individual people in our church and in a church as a whole and everybody in the room tonight that we're not really broken for our sin anymore. We're not really uh, upset when we tell that little white lie that people like to name a lie. We're not upset that we are disrespectful to authority and we're not upset that we're lying to our mothers and fathers and we're not upset that we're lying to our kids or we're not upset that we that we give in to temptation more than we should and we're not upset that we our attitudes stink a lot of the times with people I mean as soon as I come out of my prayer closet sometimes my life just goes downhill quickly with my attitude. And I can blame it on the person that I have directed it to or I can uh, oh, walk it off very easily by saying, you know, I'm sorry, I should have done that. But I'm not. And I'm just telling you, folks, we're in a bad predicament and revival is not coming to folks that aren't going to see themselves like they're supposed to. Just isn't. And I don't want to be the, the cause for it. I don't want to be the one that holds it back and, and listen to me. I've I, 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 I got to be honest with you. I'm good at seeing other people's problems, but very poor at helping myself often. And I learned in Psychology 101 years ago when I took it, you cannot be your own psychologist. And so that's why I surround myself with, with men of God that I, and I tell Brother Paul, sometimes Brother Paul, you're just going to have to be my friend and tell me. I don't want him to run around uh, second guessing everything I do as the pastor, and he does not, but sometimes I just need to be here to hear some stuff. And I said, Brother Paul, just get him the pastor and tell me, man, am I messed up here? And sometimes he says yes, and sometimes he says no. 
But I want to know that. I don't want to. Uh, and, and so as the pastor of the church, God has given me authority in this church with this local body of believers. And I can see everything that, that, that comes out and, 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 and really want to help you. And uh, a matter of fact, the last two nights of my life, I have slept none. Because of things that are happening in our church. And, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to get you feel sorry because I don't have to sleep. I don't really care about that. But I hate not being able to because of worries and, and different things like that. And, and because of this revival that I believe God wants to send. And, and, and it's just kind of going haywire. And, and so what I'm saying to you today, tonight is you got to examine yourself. And you got to see where you're at. And if you don't, man, you're, 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 as, you're as dumb as the person out there that doesn't know Jesus. Amen. Or ignorant. Not dumb. I should have said that. Ignorant. Not knowing. They don't know them, so they act like that. But what's our excuse? I mean, we can very well be, a lot of you have grown into this thing, can be very well for what we call professional Christians. We know what to say. We know how to dress. We know how to appease the pastor. We know how to be there. We know how to da, 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 da. But behind the scenes, man, we're, we're like the, the Pharisees. They knew how to be religious. They knew how to pray in the marketplaces. They knew how to give judgment. They knew how to do this. But Jesus said, man, you guys are white sepulchers. You're just dirty graves. The outside of the plate's clean, but the inside's messed up. You, 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 you love me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. And, and listen to me, this is not, this is not just, I mean, this is for everybody. But unfortunately, man, I know things going on in here. And, 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 and I'm just saying, man, we're in trouble. Families are in trouble. People are in trouble. And, 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 and what goes, we all go, man. We've got to be broken for our fellow uh, uh, church members and, and stuff like that. And it, it, it's scary. David cheated. David messed up. And David starts saying, Have mercy upon me, O God. And in verse number one, and, and, and blot out my wickedness and help me according to thy loving kindness. And, and Lord, take me and help me to restore to me the joy of thy salvation. And, and Lord, just, just help me to win souls and deliver me. And, and, and Lord, verse 13, Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. David said, if, if God, if you'll help me and you'll forgive me, then I'll be able to teach transgressors, people that, 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 that are going against you, and I'll be able to convert them. But if we don't get any help tonight, man, we can't help nobody. And folks, I promise you this, hopefully not tonight, but there are folks that come down and pray to the Lord or sit in your seat in prayer, and your prayer goes absolutely nowhere. Because the Bible says he will not hear your prayer if you have iniquity in your heart. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear my prayer. And God says that. And, and boy, I'm telling you, we got to be careful that they we're okay. We're praying and we're doing devotions and, and we're having this and we're having that and our hearts are messed up. And David was messed up and David knew it and he acknowledged it. And God hadn't talked to him in a year. It says in verse 15, O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. God, come back into my life so I can talk about you. And folks, where are we, where are we at on this? You see, well, Brother, it's interesting. We just had a great night of revival. Man, God's been blowing in our church every service, and, and you still think we got problems? No, I don't think we have problems. God must think we have problems. Because I wanted to preach out of Hebrews 4.12. Uh, or not 4.12, but Hebrews 4.19. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Let me obtain mercy. I, I wanted that. And God says, no, no, let's go back to 51. Because revival can't come, Burton, until people get their hearts right with the Lord. And maybe tonight, maybe tonight we just need to individually get to this altar and start begging God to come into our life and help us. And start confessing the sins of, of, you know, I can start naming stuff. But come on now, we're not little kids no more. The Holy Spirit will tell you what your sin is. And it could be, uh, it, it, a lot of it's our mouths. A lot of it's a quick reaction instead of acting. Reacting instead of acting. Uh, and I've done that often. 
Uh, a lot of it is, you know, it is ignorance. We just don't know or we're just not willing to recognize it. But look, man, if you've not spent some time with the Lord today and not got into the Word of God and not got on your face, I'm glad you came tonight. And I think you ought to keep coming. But man, when are we going to grow up? And when are we going to start getting a hold of God? Because God's got a big work to do. I wonder this. And now, now this is just me. I feel like the Holy Spirit said to say this, so I'll say it. I hadn't thought about this one time. I have thought about myself the whole time. Maybe, I think maybe the Lord hasn't opened that building up over there because maybe I'm not ready yet. Well, maybe God hadn't opened it up because we got folks in here playing church and God can't do nothing with us yet. And people are going to hell over there in that neighborhood. And, 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 and God's wanting to save them. And God opens up the doors. And maybe, maybe we're holding it back. Holding revival back. Listen, young people. You'll stand before God. Because you've got to... You know, the, 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 the payment or the repercussions of, of rebellion will be hot and heavy upon this group. If they don't get it right, because you've heard the truth, to whom much is given, much is required. God's not going to say, oh, he was just a little boy or a little girl, no, no, no. No, no. You're going to wreck your life if you don't get right with the Lord. I, I, I'm not for, I, 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 hey, I hate that Jonathan sits there in jail, but Jonathan looked through that window and told me, Pastor, I'm glad I got right with the Lord, and I'd rather be in here the rest of my life than to be out there like I was without God. I mean, now that, that was a few months into it. And, 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 and I hate that happened, but look, that's, the, that's what happens. When we don't live for the Lord. And thank God he got his head screwed on again. And, and it's going to be okay. And people need the Lord there. They need men of God there to do something. I mean, God can use that. Uh, when my best friend's been sitting in jail since we were 19 years old. And, and, and in Soledad, California, in prison. And, and he's strung out on the Lord. He's reaching people. Killed somebody. And when we were 19, killed a drug dealer. They gave him the book for everything, man. Just never get out. But he's living for the Lord right now. And all I'm saying is it may not work out like that for the rest of us. Yeah. And illegitimate kids, that, that's wicked. And and, and, and and to give in to, to these sexual things and things going on and, and, and with our kids, our teenagers, and and and, 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 and the TVs that are leading them to it, and, and we can say, I don't know what's going on. Well, I can tell you what's going on. I've told you what's going on, and you still ain't listening and getting that corruption out of the house. But God can't do nothing if you're not going to listen. And if you're not going to do what God wants you to do, so that ain't what God wants you to do. what you want me to do, Brother Burton. I can prove every single thing I say out of this book. And if I can't mm -hmm. prove it, shame on me, and I will apologize to you. But I'm just saying, man, David said, David was messed up. He said, well, I'll talk about you, Lord, if you'll come back. And then he says, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Lord, you don't want me to bring animals to the altar, or I would do that. Lord, you don't want my... Uh, you, you don't want my offering... Or I, many people try to buy their way out. You know, back people all the time handing me money. I'll put this in an offer for church. They won't come to church. So we don't want your money. But no, 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 take it. Do, do something with it. We, you know, what they're doing, they're trying to give an offer to the Lord. The Lord doesn't want an offering. He said, uh, he didn't desire sacrifice. Else he'd give it. He said, thou delightest not in burnt offering. Man, God's not in. God's not happy. Listen to me. Don't mess me up here. Don't give me such a strength. God's not impressed with church attendance. This is reasonable service. We get to hear from God. Where God will be impressed, He said, yeah, I don't burn offerings. He said, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Man, you come in here and say, man, I need God. I need the Lord. And I'm, you know, I'm, but Paul, I'm tired of, of, of failing all the time. And, and, and I hate, you know, Sometimes I wish I could turn me off and not analyze every situation, but I'm an over-analyzer. I, I, I just analyze every single thing any one of you say to me, 
I have analyzed and overanalyzed, and and man, I'm thinking, I know what they can do. I know what they can do, and, and I go to sleep and can't sleep because I know what you can do. And and and, and with, with, with myself, man, I just take it out and say, Lord, I'm, I'm messed up too. You know, when you point at somebody, three fingers are pointing right back at you. And so I got to analyze myself. He said, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Contrite means smash to pieces your heart. Contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. And so we want revival in your family? Get your heart right with the Lord. You want revival in your life? Get your heart right with the Lord. You want revival in your life? Ask God to help you. But the problem is, is a lot of folks think just like they think. And man, I can't say anybody can come to this church for any length of time to think like they think. Because you were up here, man, preaching this book in its entirety. And it never grows old. And, and so where is your life at tonight? What do you think about yourself? I mean, what have you promised God? I mean, I, folks, we can line up after service tonight and you can come over and say, what do you think, Brother Burton? And I'll tell you everything. I mean, a lot of us have promised stuff to the Lord that we're going to do this for God and we're going to do this for God and, and we've got consumed in everything the world's consumed in. And, and God can't deal with us. He can't send revival to us. All we live off is His mercy. And I went, through, I, went, I went with God. I told God I was going to do it in the beginning. Remember, when I was fired up about Jesus in the beginning. And, and I was a psychopath. I used to call Him every day in Bible college. And I'd be like, Brother! I mean, that, was, that was just how I was. And and, 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 and man, I just want, I want to be close to the Lord, so close that I can hear Him and feel Him and, and be with Him. But I want you to be there too. Amen. And, and so, a broken and contrite heart, O God, Thou wilt not despise. In verse 18, do good, in thy, do good in Thy good pleasure unto Zion and build the walls of Jerusalem. And, and I studied on that and... There's a lot of uh, prophecy implied here about the millennial reign and the Jews are going to get right with God at the end of the tribulation and then God's going to build the Jerusalem back up and do all that. And I believe that 100%. But as an application for it, hey, do good for God and, and build the walls of God's house. And then thou shalt be pleased. God will be pleased with the sacrifices of the righteous then and with the burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings and, 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 and they shall offer bullocks upon the altar. Man, the, back in the Old Testament, they offered all those animals. God says, do right in the house of God. Get your heart right tonight. And then God will be pleased with your sacrifices. And then God might want to want to use your sacrifices. But really what we ought to come down here to do is sacrifice ourselves again. But Burton, this don't sound like the, 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 the Hebrews 4.19. It doesn't, man. I thought all week, Hebrews 4.19. I thought, man, God, it, I, thought, I thought I heard a voice. Hebrews 4.19. <laughs> and then God's like, no, we're going back to Psalm 51, man. we got to get some hearts right. Hey, did you get your heart right yet for the Lord? I mean, some of you ain't ever been to the altar. I don't care how sick you are, how old you are, or how cool you are, man. You ought to be down here begging God to meet with you. Yeah. And and he said, well, I ain't coming now for sure. I don't really care. I'm going to be here, and I want the Lord to touch me. Yeah. And I learned it from my pastor, and you learned it from your pastor, who you don't know better than me. God gives you a pastor to have some backbone and some strength to just tell you like it is so you can get your heart right with the Lord and do for the Lord, man. God wants to move. God's not into your, your, your sacrifices, your burnt offerings. If your heart's not right with Him, you're not getting your heart right to, for God to move. But folks, we've we got to pray. Because, listen, I want God to give us revival, but I'm not sure it's going to come if we don't get our hearts right with the Lord and, and stop feeding off the mayhem outside and stop living like they live. Man, let me ask you this. I, I ain't read one thing I wrote down. I wrote down good things. God wants you to humbly come before Him and pray for forgiveness. He wishes to see changed lives afterwards. The whole church is missing that point. When's the last time you prayed? Have you ever done anything because it pleased God? Or did you do it so you could get something in return? Young people, it pleased God if you got your heart right tonight. 
that please God? Are you really any different than the lost world outside except for a few days a week in here and uh, 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 some token prayers in the morning? And listen, there are people like that, trust me. People in here tonight that don't care about a holy, loving God. And you're not going to pray. And you're not going to care. And you're going to refuse to be fixed. And if you don't realize you're broke, man, you're in trouble. There ain't no big wigs in here. It's all level at the foot of the cross. We're right. all in a mess. Amen. If we don't get down and do something, and I wrote this down on purpose, He wants you to humbly come before Him and pray for forgiveness, but He wishes to see a changed life afterwards. I don't know how many times I've prayed over the same thing and never changed. I mean, didn't even get back to my seat before I hadn't changed. Before I went back. And so God would like to see something different. That's what revival will come. People getting their hearts right for the Lord. Man, if we all had our heart right for the Lord, man, a, a mighty rushing wind and like the Holy Spirit of God would just, would just blow into this city and just zap it. Because that's what He wants to do with us. But He also would like to fellowship with us and to have closeness with us and be able to depend upon us. If God was as dependable as you are to you, what kind of God would you have? I'm just asking you. That's what we got to think about. If God got up and looked at you and took care of you, like you get up and read your Bible and pray to Him, how would you be doing? We just got to ask ourselves that. And, 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 I, and I'm just telling you, man, the Lord wants to do a work. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. And uh, we're just going to get down to the altar tonight. And you can pray with people. Listen to me very nicely as I can say this. If you're not interested in praying, sit there and be quiet. Please, do us a favor and pray for something. God gives you a chance to come here and get your heart right with the Lord tonight. Because many of us need it. I need it. And I thought I was right before I started preaching. And God just delivered a sermon to me inside of the sermon. And so, if I need it, everybody could probably need it. And we get down and we pray. If you want to pray with some people in here, you got any bitterness against anybody in this room, shame on you. Get that right. You need to get right with, with other people in here. You get that right. You told God you were going to do something and you're not doing it. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He does not change His mind. What are you really doing for the Lord besides showing up here and having token prayers in the morning? And that's nothing. That's, God's not excited about that. He's excited about us getting our hearts right with the Lord. And listen to me. It's a quiet time of prayer, but man, we can get fired up in here tonight and get God back on the line. Man, a person gets right with the Lord, man, God just says, that God jumped your back. I mean, you're back. I thank God to see little Asia, little ghost sitting in here tonight. I mean, you know, that's a blessing. Is she perfect? No. But she came back. And it was like she never was gone. And the devil told her it would be different. That they were there making fun of her probably. And we were talking about her. And when she comes in, we're staring at her or something like that. Or the devil's like that. It's just not true. So if you'll come back to the Lord, man, God's no better than we are. He'll just grab you and pull you in. Let's pray. And let's ask God to move with us tonight. Pray. Pray with your families. Whatever you do, let's have a prayer meeting. We've got about 15 good minutes where we can pray. And ask God to meet with us. Father, we love you. And Lord, I just ask you to meet with us tonight, Lord. Uh, Lord, as we get ready to pray and we think about you, Lord, I pray that you just have your will away with us tonight, Father. I, I need you, Lord. And God, I want to make sure there's nothing in my heart that's not right tonight, Father. So please help me with that. Father, would you bless our prayer time together? You know, we have visitors here, and, or maybe uh, we have people to pray to, and Father, would you meet with us, Lord, Holy Spirit of God, put a hedge of protection around us and, and, and help us, Lord, reveal to us where we need to get right and help us to do it. May we live for you. May it be real. May this be real, Lord. Please, God, do something in Jesus' name. Amen. You come to the altar.
Father, Lord, we love you. God, I want to thank you for Lord, just being so good to me. God, I don't deserve you, Lord. I don't deserve to be able to have you be blessed by you make you do it. I don't deserve your mercy. I don't deserve your grace, Lord.
move in and touch us and help us to be in unity. Help us to be set for one purpose, and that's to serve you, to love you, and be close to you, Lord. And may we see the heaven drop down and things be different because of it. Lord, we love to see that, God. Lord, nobody loves the people outside of this building like you do. Father, help us to have a heart for the people. Help us to see people like you see them. Help us to look at that person <coughs> that would normally make us angry and irritated and see them as a lost soul that if someone doesn't help them and love them and invest them somehow, that they're just going to die and go to hell. Father, help us to be a real, real New Testament church. Help us to be soul winners. Help us to be Bible readers, prayers, uh, faithful to everything. And God, faithful to our families, faithful to our husbands, and faithful to our wives. The world's philosophy, Lord, make fun of your wife, make fun of your husband is so wicked. God, help us to be in line with each other and our families. And Lord, I pray that you just do it. Lord, we need you, Father. Lord, tonight's been a great night, Lord, because of you and we love you. Father, reveal our sin to us. Help us to get things right. Help us to see where we are and continue to do that, Lord. Surely we could improve even more. Maybe there's some things I didn't think about and others did more that you could help us with. Help us to make ourselves right with every person on the face of this earth that nothing hinders you from moving in and touching us. Lord, we can't wait to see what you can do with people that get totally sold out. Help us to be those people. Lord, they counted us out from the beginning. We ain't much, but Lord, you're everything and you're something great. So Father, I pray that you do it. Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you for a good night of prayer. Thank you for letting us be here in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, um, we'll be here at 10 o'clock on Saturday. We invite you to be here, be in your place. Uh, we want to invest in folks and uh, make sure that you're reading and praying. If you don't know how to do that, it's okay. I didn't know how to do it, so but somebody told me. Uh, and so uh, make sure that you do that. Make sure you stop putting your jobs.